so this is going to be about pagers. Yep, yep. This is in 1993, but still, there's there's a lot of traffic out there, and um, let's uh, let's play with it. I'm going to go through uh, kind of a basic uh, SIGINT type presentation. So uh, SIGINT signals intelligence. Um, I guess it's just a fancy name. Try to make my hobby sound a little cooler than it is. Um, so, who is this guy? Uh, Steve from Idaho, Snuffleupagus. Um, I like that one. Just rolls off the tongue, Snuffleupagus. Um, I really don't do anything fancy. Um, I work like everyone else. Uh, work at a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, high aspirations. Stay in school, kids. Um, I like electronics. They're cool. I think we all do. Um, if you don't, you probably should. Uh, making stuff and breaking stuff. More so the latter than anything. I really can't fix much. But I try, and I guess that's all that matters. Um, so uh, let, let's, let's look at some of the stuff we're going to have here. Um, there is a lot of traffic that, uh, that goes over the, the wire. How many here actually... Uh, the code pager traffic actively or back in like the 80s when people actually did it <laughs> yeah yeah um was there any anything interesting back then just to raise your hands yes no hands no hands oh a couple couple so there was some interesting stuff um there's there's still some now it's uh it's really very very niche market but uh i mean some of these abbreviations it's not a bad niche. Uh, we got DHS, Department of Homeland Security. They like to send uh, um, situational awareness things. Um, Department of Transportation, Bureau of Prisons, Department of Corrections. Um, the sporting thing. I uh, was actually playing with some radio stuff um, during the U.S. Open. And that's how I found out Tiger Woods won. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat. Um, yeah, see, so yeah. yeah. Any... any Golfers in here? No? Okay. Um, so uh, hospital stuff. It's actually kind of criminal how much hospital data goes over there. Patient, physician, and then symptoms. Um, that's, I don't know. I don't know about you guys. That's probably not good if I'm calling because I have a urinary tract infection. I don't want some weirdo in his garage to, to know that I have a urinary tract infection. Then have my phone number so that he could call me and say, so <laughs> does it pee when you burn? Uh, yeah, who is this? Um, teleconferences. Yeah, yeah, that's slam. Uh, his mom gave me the clap. Um, so teleconferences. I, I'm sorry if I'm crude. I'm very nervous right now. It's my first conference, first time speaking. Yeah, yeah. G give me singles and maybe I'll get naked. Well, maybe not. But uh, teleconferences. So... Um, what is, well, what's that mean? Uh, teleconferences? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, telefreak.org. No, um, it is, uh, th there'll be issues, and people need to solve issues. So uh, they have a teleconference. <laughs> yeah, go figure, solve issues. What a novel concept. So uh, you call in, and uh, there, well, if you were to call in, um, you would, uh, you would hear them troubleshooting whatever it is they're troubleshooting. And it's, it's amazing because you could chime in and say, yeah, I'm, I'm Rick from security. Oh, hey, Rick, what's going on? Uh, nothing. So I, I need remote access to help update. And they'll shoot it to you. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, once again, don't do that because that's probably not a smart idea. But it's possible. And, you know, and that's it's probably not a good idea. Um, <laughs> emails, all kinds. Uh, well, if, okay, first off, you shouldn't be doing this. Uh, it's illegal to monitor common carrier pager traffic, but it's illegal, according to the ECPA, to monitor uh, non-common carrier pager stuff. So for the purpose of this presentation, all the data is, of course, non-common carrier frequency captures. So keep that in mind. Um, all right. It's been a long time since any of us, if any of us, have uh, thought or use a pager, so uh, let, let's talk a little bit uh, about it. Um, so cap codes, that, that is essential in the analysis to find out, you know, who, who it is, where it's coming from. Um, it's like, I think, eight characters, eight or seven characters. Um, 
in the United States, the stuff that I'm seeing, and even in other countries, is, is mostly pox sag and flex. Pox sag being English, um, actually invented in the UK. It's real popular over there. They still use it a lot. Um, flex, I get a lot of flex traffic in my area in Idaho. Um, <laughs> but uh, they're laughing. I don't know why. In Idaho, we get pager traffic. Yeah. Um, so uh, the Golay stuff, uh, I've heard some of that in Canada. And uh, the next thing, you guys are probably thinking, how have you heard it? Well, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a new age, man. It's, it, you're not just picking up uh, radio traffic from your area. You can listen to you want to answer your phone? Okay. I, I just I can stop talking. Uh, okay. It's all right. It, yeah, it's sorry, B. It was your pager. Yeah. So, um, once again, this is me trying to resolve my nervousness. So, yeah, this mic, I have it like all the way up here. Let me bring it down. Um, so, because of the internet, you could stream data. So, I could set up remote nodes in remote locations and uh, actually listen to stuff or people already have. So um, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So theoretically, I could listen to Caracas in Venezuela and pick up data there, which is really neat because it's in Venezuela and I'm in Idaho. And I could, as long as their radio is set up correctly with the uh, baseband audio, I can actually listen to that, which is neat. But then I could decode it as well, which is even neater. Um, so a data slicer, uh, FSK data slicers, pretty neat. You can make them. There's two or f uh, fours, level two or level fours. Um, I really don't have much time working at the gas station, so I buy them off this guy on eBay for like $12. I guess he's got time. He's retired. and uh, Well, he is retired and he's a ham op. So the level twos are actually called, uh, what are they called? Ham cons or something? Like ham coms, I think. Um, and then... Uh, we need a discriminator tap in order to get the baseband audio so that we could decode it because um, the stuff's F FSK versus AFSK, which, uh, anyhow, here's some of the data. I wanted to uh, just give a quick example but not show too much. Um, there's some interesting stuff there. Um, if, if you look at that, uh, the inmate stuff, um, there's actually a lot of, uh, prison data, and the, some of the, the stuff is, is kind of neat. It's, uh, you know, inmate has eight kilos of cocaine and glassling bag and anus. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Um, but you can, <laughs> goatsy? No. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of cool that you can track the happenings within the prison. And what's even cooler is there's forms for people who have loved ones in the prison. So I could find out what form that is, find out uh, um, information uh, from, sometimes I'll say inmate names, and we'll talk about that later on. There's databases, depending on what state you're in, that will actually allow you to pull up uh, dossiers of these prisoners with photos and uh, quasi-prison record, which is kind of interesting. I mean, because, you know, it's helpful for me to have a picture to their, their story. Yeah. Um, and then... The MRI stuff, which, I mean, J poor Jessica, you know what I mean? Um, that's not the name that was in there. I just put Jessica because it's a, it's a pretty name. <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing. Um, yeah, n noob, exactly. So basic SIGINT, once again, um, this isn't like real deal, you know, NSA signal intelligence type stuff. But since that's all I can really do is pretend like, I do any of that stuff, I figured that probably best to make my hobby sound somewhat important. So I say, Sigurd, I'm doing Sigurd in the garage, dear. I can't eat. Um, yeah. So I, I'll talk about, uh, I'll talk briefly about uh, nodal analysis. I'll talk a little bit about targeting, and that's where the cap codes come in and stuff like that. And uh, signal detection, that's kind of self explanatory, picking up the signal. Um, but it, it's cool because if you put up a, a map or a chart, and in your area, you can actually start, you know, putting pins in it where, where you get traffic. And uh, it's kind of neat to find out, you know, where you're getting stuff from. And uh, it's kind of neat to kind of dig a little more into it and uh, find out nastiness that you probably shouldn't know. But, of course, that you're not going to share. Um, but it's interesting. Who needs TV when you have pagers, right? Yeah. Um, so the rise and fall. 
What does that mean? Uh, well, who here has a pager on them? Yeah. Who here has a cell phone on them? Yeah. So, uh, you know, so what, though? You know, I mean, pagers have their use. Like I said, niche market, but great signal. Uh, the, the transmissions are pretty cool. They, it penetrates pretty much everywhere. Penetrates. Um, yeah, woo for the penetration. But, uh, I mean, you could get a page, you know, in places you can't get an F, uh, a message, an SMS. Um, and then the protocols we talked about, uh, the flex and pox sag. Um, there's actually different kinds of flex and different kinds of pox sag. Um, well, water rates. And then there's different levels for the flex. And that doesn't really matter unless you want to decode or attempt to decode everything. So 100% of your traffic. Then it start, you have to start worrying about what level it is. And depending on the app you're using, if you're using an app, which you probably would be, um, you can actually tell what level it is and what baud rate it is, and it'll help. Um, of course, it'll help. Um, it's kind of cool, though, to run some of this stuff through a spectrum analyzer and actually see the waveform. It's kind of neat. I don't know much about electronics. I like to pretend like I do. So it's, it's kind of cool to pretend like I'm doing something neat, something off sneakers, sneaker-ish. Uh, Okay, pictures. Everyone loves pictures. Um, setting up the station. I see, once again, the station uh, sounds kind of cool. Maybe not. But uh, um, we need antennas. And uh, there's different kinds of antennas. Everyone's got their favorite antenna. You go on a hand form. Um, wow, that really burned it up. So antennas. Um, so afterwards, get in contact with me. We could talk about this more because I figured I'd only do 20 minutes because I'm really nervous. And it seems like I, I have like 38 slides to go through. So we need antennas. Yay. But see, the thing with Ponxag and Flex, sometimes you don't even need a antenna. You can use a uh, paper clip and uh, pick up stuff and actually decode it, uh, which is kind of neat. Cables. So uh, this guy I know, not me, uh, a couple times bought the 1 fourth instead of the 1 eighth. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I'll keep this for another time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if there's any radio geeks in here, you're going to see that RG58 and be like, that's crap. Don't use that. There's better stuff to use. Well, I'm poor, so I'm going to use the 58. <laughs> and uh, the serial cables. Yeah. Okay, so we were talking about the decoding software earlier. And um, it's, it's really limited depending on your OS. But uh, I, I'm going to use Windows for my stuff. Um, you can use the DOS stuff, that radio RAF stuff's kind of neat. The Linux stuff sucks because it's not really for the pager stuff, but it has the SA, so you can actually see the waveform. Uh, that's actually a live capture. If anyone wants to try to read that, ha, 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 it's too small, you can't. But it's got sports scores and stuff like that, kind of neat. Um, just some of the radios, you need the right radio. You can have your uh, PC controlled, which is kind of neat or the cheap $55 one or $30 one, depending where you are, and mod that. So if you brick it, which you probably shouldn't, unless you have sausage fingers and can't solder, um, you could get another one. So you have to choose what's right for you. Um, cost is a factor for some. And I don't know if you really want to do the, the mobile aspect, but if you did, um, how much gear are you toting around? And uh, of course, ease of use. Now, with the discriminator taps, there's different kinds of, uh, of, of chips. Um, sometimes you'll be, doing a, you'll be doing your tap off the 11 or the 9th pin. And there's a gentleman called Bill Cheeks, or Bill Cheek. And he did a lot of research in this field. He's now dead, but he did a lot of research in this field. And um, he's got a couple books. Uh, once again, Bill Cheek, write that down, pick up his books. They're awesome. Um, so what are they? Why is it needed? Well, w when you're doing this, when you're doing the decoding, you need the, uh, the baseband uh, audio. So you need to tap off before it goes, because it's a raw signal, so before it goes to the discriminator circuitry. Uh, finding it, you can tell because Bill Cheek did a lot of research, and he says what pins are good and what pins are not. But actually, if you go to the chip, you could read that off. Well, I don't think you can read that off. But... Um, if you get the marking on the IC, you could find out what's the discriminator chip and what's not. So I'm going to have to peel through this stuff. Here's some pictures of uh, level 2 and level 4 
Uh, FSK Data Slicer, once again, eBay. There's a schematics. They're all over the Internet. Uh, Radio Reference uh, has some, has them, those uh, pictures on there. A bunch of geeks on there. Ethics, don't be a dumbass. I mean, there's some information you're going to see on there that you probably shouldn't be seeing. And it, it's kind of hypocritical to say don't do it, and this is how you do it. But, you know, I didn't tell you to do it. <laughs> all right, let me... Okay, five minutes. I'm going to share some of this with you guys. That's just an idea of what you're listening for, because as you scan through, it's kind of nice to be able to hear that uh, and distinguish what that is. Some of you guys are probably, ah, but it's, it's really not that bad. Um, so using the band scope. Oh, uh, this is a US, uh, ULS database, the FCC. It'll actually show uh, who holds licenses for that freak. Now, I really don't use this, but some people do, uh, or, or you can or should if you're looking for a freak, because this is the place that, you know, would have the information. But I, when, when I do my, my SIGINT stuff, I, I like to hunt, you know what I mean? So I'll go through the spectrum and, and hunt. Um, but if you want to, you advanced search and then the type of traffic, and then it'll show licensees and stuff like that. Ooh, that's sexy. Look at the band scope, that's showing activity. Um, so when I'm scanning through, I'll look for the peaks and stuff like that. Um, what's that? Uh, uh, that's actually the PCR 1000, that's the interface for it. So the ICOM PCR 1000, black box technology, really. Uh, well, it actually has it in there already. Yeah, it, it says uh, on the back there's a packet port. So it'll say 9600 uh, bought packet, and you, you can use that as your discriminator. So um, I'll actually get to that question afterwards if you like so I could burn through some of these slides because I'm an idiot and didn't get enough time. So that's what it looks like when you, you're not doing stuff right. And these are the uh, laws. The uh, Communications Act of 1934 is actually what got Bill Cheek all... Uh, into all his legal trouble because he was selling MDT type uh, decoding stuff, which was just a discriminator tap. It was a kit, wasn't even put together. Okay, now this is the fun part. Once you get your data, I have uh, more than eight months worth of data, and uh, I, I like to, uh, to actually go through the data and find out what everything means. Go figure. So you data mine your data, is what I was told it was yesterday. Yesterday, rather, yesterday. Um, and here's that database I was telling you guys about for New York for the inmate search. There's some abbreviations of uh, facilities and uh, the message for bad guys doing bad stuff. Uh, use Google. Uh, find out what that stuff means. And maybe you'll think you know what it means. Uh, maybe it won't be right. But uh, fool yourself and pretend like you know what you're doing. Um, here's the teleconference stuff. Uh, once again, I mean, take the number, log in. And uh, our call in and listen. It's good stuff, good fun to be had. But you know, when someone's sending that out in their crisis or crises, depending on how you want to say it, um, they, they think it's you know it's just a phone number, big deal. It's, well, it is a big deal, and don't do it um, because if you want to do something like that, uh, try different means. Um, the concerns, quality, quantity, uh, damaging scenarios, um, possible damaging scenarios, someone getting on your conference and uh, recording everything and say they're a competitor, corporate espionage, um, they now know what's messed up and that's probably not a good idea. Um, who listens and watches traffic? Uh, private investigators love to monitor pager stuff. Um, in fact, we have one in the audience from Tennessee. Um, he loves to listen to that stuff. Um, you get weekly uh, management meetings on there all the time. You get to check the status of the company you don't work for. Um, I was talking about mobility uh, earlier, and I was actually going to bring my uh, mobile leech, a.k.a. ghetto beeper buster, but it looks far too much like an IED. So I figured <laughs> TSA probably wouldn't let me go through with it. Um, but it's a $7 briefcase. Okay, the uh, cap code stuff, you could just switch the crystals. The meat of the stuff is what I actually want to show you guys is this uh, stuff of decoding stuff off the Internet. This blah, 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 globaltuners.com. 
It's an awesome place. Uh, volunteers put this stuff up. So you could go on there and listen to their nodes. And, I mean, it, it depends, you know, um, there's certain etiquette to it, of course. You can't just go into the room and hijack it. But uh, different people like to listen to different stuff. But different people also like to decode stuff. And um, they can help you out if you have any issues. But, I mean, there's just so many things you could you, you can do. Um, it's kind of crazy. And it's not your radio. I mean, you don't own a radio. Uh, you don't have to own a radio to do this. So that's what makes it neat. Um, yeah, the, uh, the garbage in, garbage out. I'm sure we've all heard that. Um, just make sure your stuff's set up correctly. Now, how do you do that? Um, if the, the readout on your, uh, answer that. Uh, if the readout on your uh, app is all red uh, rather than green, that it's, that software is guessing, and um, you may want to, you may be off freak, you may not have the ba right bandwidth. Um, so, wow. All right. Um, questions, I guess. Oh, that's actually time. So, uh, bombard, <laughs> saved by the bell. Bombard me with questions afterwards. And if anyone wants to come up and look at this beautiful scanner that I acquired from a gentleman named uh, The Felon, please, by all means. It's actually monitoring uh, Common Carrier right now. So it's just to show you that there is traffic. Did you change it? Did you change it? No, it's still there. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Well, I'm not decoding, so it's fine to listen. But uh, so with that, thank you guys for coming. I thought I was only getting four people. It's a little more than four people. Yeah. Rock on.